You know, right, guys, welcome back to another video. This is a video that I didn't expect to be making. So I was wanted to know what the internal layout of the wiring was in one of these um, fuse adapters, these piggyback fuse holders that you can get. So I found the, the wiring diagram, so I know which side is which. But there's a huge issue, and the internet is wrong. On this one basically the internet is dangerous on this for this subject I won't bore you with all the sites I mean there are many and they're all saying the same thing and they are all wrong if you're installing a dash cam or an amplifier or a, whatever it is and you're using these you're using this guidance it's wrong and it's potentially dangerous and it's very very simple to explain so even if this video here it's got half a million views the title is how to install a fuse tap correctly unfortunately he doesn't he does it the wrong way he follows the same advice as you get in here here I don't know maybe it just started off with one of these pictures went on the internet and then it's just got copied and pasted over hundreds of websites but they're all wrong guys let me explain to you why it's wrong so the argument is that this is supposed to be the live this goes to your original device say your um stereo for example and then you put in your uh, for example you put in a dash cam here everybody is saying that the the permanent live or the switch live that's coming in should be on this side so you can feed your original device through b and you can feed your dash cam through accessory b here and the logic is the only logic that i've seen the only reason that people are saying to, to do this is that if your original device has a problem your new dash cam will still work if this device has a problem and blows the fuse which is yeah it's correct but that is not the reason that this is wrong the problem is guys yeah you've got the original fuse which was 10 amps this wire is probably going to be rated to 10 amps maybe they put a bit of a extra headroom in it maybe you can do 12 amps 13 amps depends on the car manufacturer also depends how old the car is if the car is old 10 amps is probably going to be the absolute top top maximum current you want to be running through it so what happens if you do it the way the internet is saying you you've got your constant feed coming in this side your device here your dash cam here we're not drawing 10 amps let's say we're drawing this is going to a fuel pump for example you're drawing the fuel full 10 amps through here but we're also drawing power through this fuse here so in total we will be drawing 15 amps from the internal from the the input feed the 12 volt feed to our fuse box hopefully that illustrates the problem this allows us to draw 15 amps from a cable that's only rated to 10 amps it's supposed to be rated to 10 amps this is not correct guys this is wrong if you have a device if you do it to a fuel pump cigarette lighter and your your device is pulling a decent amount of amps you could potentially melt long story short you could melt the cables in the car and if you melt it and the the insulation comes off it and that strikes the starts making contact with something other something else that's metal potentially sparks guys and then we're talking potential fire this is very important and this is why we have to fit it the input 12 volts has to come through this pin here so we've got 10 amp protection on this wire this wire cannot draw more than 10 amps that wire is protected by this fuse yes the power is going to have to go through the accessory also but that is fine that is no problem at all that is not an issue the issue is we need to protect this cable here and if this is drawing 5 amps and this is drawing 10 amps we're gonna blow the fuse which is what we want to happen if we were drawing more current than the cable is rated for this is exactly what we want we want this fuse to blow if the cable here is trying to draw more than 10 amps we want the fuse to blow because the cable here is only rated to this current so guys 
this, this is how you do it. Forget the internet, forget all these videos, these pictures, this one here. They're all telling you to do it the wrong way and in a way that is dangerous, potentially dangerous. To, because, I'll reiterate because I think it's very important. Again, another one saying to, to put it on, to install it this way around. It's not correct, guys. We need to, to ensure that the cable that's supplying our original fuse does not see more current than the fuse that's in that fuse holder. And the only way to do that is we have our permanent, well, not a permanent, but we have our input our supply comes in through here runs through our 10 volt turn through runs through our 10 amp fuse so that wire is protected and then it runs through the accessory it's possible it's possible that the thing that we're running off the thing that we're tapping into for example the fuel pump and our accessory will draw more than 10 amps in which case this fuse will blow which is a good thing that is a good thing the fuse that wire I think if we look at it like that, the wire has to be protected from drawing more amps than it is designed to do. And if we have the feed coming in this side, we're allowing that cable to draw 15 amps of current, which is not rated for. We're talking heat, potentially melting, potentially sparks, potential fire doing it that way. The feed has to come in this way so the cable is protected by the original fuse. And if we're finding that our dash cam or whatever else we're running is blowing this fuse that is a good thing we need to find a different power supply you find another fuse in the fuse box that's like 15 amps perhaps the uh, cigarette lighter and use that until we find one that can support the original device that it's the fuse is connected to and our accessory so I think the top tip would be to find something that's like 15 amps that's on the switch life there may be headroom you may be lucky there may be like a 15 amp cable maybe a 20 amp cable maybe but the fact of the matter is it's a 10 amp fuse in that circuit for a reason and if you want to eliminate any chance of that wire getting hot melting as i said sparks etc then this is the way to do it feed here not here and especially on older cars as the cables oxidize there's going to be more resistance the older your car is the more likely that wire is to get hot if you're running excess current through it guys that's the video hopefully it's helpful if you want to see more videos like this subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next video